This week on Hermitcrafts. Decked out and nothing else. Decked out Craft and Mumbo did the other sides for space. Big game go brrr. I heard B-dubs gave birth and decked out. Jeez, 40 plus hours of Hermitcraft videos just this week. We eating healthy. Dango's chained to the server now. The thing and the do did something. There's a chance someone played Minecraft. Everyone played decked out. The end. Welcome to the Hermitcraft Recap. My name is Pixel Rips. Our writer is Loy XP. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. And we appreciate your patience last week while we took a weekend off. We figure doing this show for 80 weeks in a row earns us a break every now and then. Also, the three of us are voting for the crab, the armadillo, and the penguin. Let us know in the comments which one you think is which. In our absence, Decked Out 2 has now entered Phase 4, which I'm pretty sure is the phase where they can declare any lands or sorceries they haven't played earlier in the turn. But with the players settling into their groove in the dungeon, we've seen a few more exterior projects rising to the surface. So without further ado, let's take a look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. I used one of those frozen strides before I had my coffee this morning, and I died. Starting with B-double-O, who after breeding ponies for most of the season turned out to be the dark horse of the competition, coming back to win Phase 2 of Decked Out, which explains the golden smile as he swaps out all the teeth blocks of his giant face and his actual Minecraft skin with gold blocks. Naturally, the assembled hermits gather round to watch the smile wiped off his face as the first run of Phase 3 doesn't go quite so swimmingly. Oh, he's right there. Yikes. If we can, I think we're gonna die. Oh yeah! I forgot so to- can I forgot to- another. But B-dubs will bounce back, and in the meantime, he picks up more minigame expertise with the second session of Zombie Cleo's Blood on the Clock Tower game. To go after the loud mouth, mm. right? Right, B-dubs? Not yes. saying that in a bad way. No, no, but good loud mouth. Vocal. Right. After all the murder, B-dubs resurrects an old project from the distant reaches of the server, returning to the monolithic stone doorway he built on a savannah mountainside and announcing he's figured out what to do with it now and for the Hermit's sake, we hope it doesn't involve Ravagers. If the Phase 2 result was unexpected, then the Phase 3 result should surprise nobody. At least nobody who's been following Decked Out since its last iteration, because Etho dedicates a ton of his time to delving the dungeon and building up his stock of cards, beginning a healthy relationship with the Loot and Scoot ability. This is what it's all about. See, this is why you need the... Gem. This one's for you, Jim. You need the loot and scoot specifically, okay? Everything else doesn't quite work. It's gotta be loot and scoot. He manages a bit of base building and organization despite all the decked out runs, but he can't resist upping the difficulty too deadly once he's got a feel for the layout of the black mines. He also discovers what the rusty repair kits are for, and at one point basically breaks the victory tome dispenser on the way out. Well, we're just gonna have to win this round then, Doc. The game's broken. Yeah, it's stuck, Tango. Oh no! Did you fall in your game? Oh no! Oh no, Etho just won all of Deck Out! Oh no! Oh, are your droppers going nuts or something? <laughs> you just got about a stack and a half of tones. Oh sweet! Oh, here they come! Thank you, Tango! Oh, oh, no. But despite being honest and returning some of those tomes, he still sweeps Phase 3 and has even saved a few tomes to give himself a head start in Phase 4. While at it, Tango Tech cracks down on the use of performance-enhancing soup among the players, the saturation manipulation is one card they can't keep up their sleeve. Not that the DM is too concerned about the delicate balance of the dungeon, given that this week sees him try out two-player runs. Mind you, one of those two players is always Tango, but still. I got three of these bad boys. <laughs> Look how giant they are! <laughs> Azumavoid and Zedaf both have saved up enough crowns to purchase the dungeon lackey power-up that makes Tango their butler within the given run. Right, it feels to me like they were all clumped up behind us. Okay. You are, you are really in, like, servant mode. I want you to be at, like, Tango, feel free to divulge information, no, no, strategy, no, and no, tactics. No, no, I am your lackey. Okay. You must request information. <laughs> this provides much less assistance than one would expect, though, since the guy appears to only ever speak in riddles and only do things he's been directly told to. The dungeon master himself. Actually, I watched Tango do some runs. He we, he died. He wasn't very good. Yeah, he's terrible, <laughs> isn't he? I'm, really I'm not sure I want him with me. He does bring with him a few potions that you can pick up and use once one of the beasts turns the table on their master. But even with that, this is not just a monkey's paw situation. You basically bought an entire chimp. Oh, he's right there. Oh, oh no, I, I slowed you myself. slowed me! <laughs> oh, oh, I'm across. Oh, 
my word! Okay. His relationship with the players turns adversarial when Tango remembers the time he became a tree and uses the same technology to remodel a pumpkin into a whole entire Ravager. Now in efficient disguise, these guys get to trolling their fellow hermits and chasing them around, even if the actual Ravagers are not as convinced. That's what you think, Joe! No, we're not. How many Ravagers did you put in this dungeon, Tango? Oh, about 12! About 12! Where is he? We get the victim's perspective from Joe Hills during a run where he was even recording with replay mods so he could re-render the dungeon with path tracing shaders, and it adds glorious ambience to his confusion as Tango and B-dubs charge at him wearing some very animated hats. I see Tango and B-dubs in the walls. Are you are you guys seriously actively messing with this? Have you guys been doing that this whole time? I don't know, maybe. And there were so <laughs> many ravagers. <laughs> That's not the only thing adding ambience to Joe's decked out experience, as his sister Quinn has been providing an improvised soundtrack to the live streams Joe edits down into his regular videos. But his luck in the Caves of Carnage has been a mixed bag. He makes it out on several occasions and even dodges the Victory Ravager to add his name to the Wall of Fame, but sometimes the walls just get in the way. In the meantime, he's been working on the layout of his pinball machine between runs of the dungeon, and it's looking more lifelike and impressive with every component he adds. Whereas Rendog has been intentionally working to make his current project look more gross and unappealing. Scabland, his dark and twisted mirror of Scarland, gets minigame plots paved with glazed terracotta block vomit, and Ren even makes the different areas completely uneven heights, the utter maniac. It's no wonder he's excited about finding his own sunglasses in the decked out dungeon, he probably needs them just to look at all those clashing textures. I mean, that's the game that we love, right? Why do we do this to ourselves, my friends? Still, at least Ren has a super smooth game to work on when he needs a break from Scabland. The Blue River Raceway now has a 90s video game looking sign courtesy of False Symmetry, which Ren is over the moon with as he returns to name tag some polar bears and prevent them from walking off the track with additional barriers. Barriers, if you will. False's eye for building is much appreciated as the whole of the server invades her double decker deck Nook to Gork and Ore, which unfortunately doesn't earn her an actual double deck but does earn an in-depth and earnest conversation with Iskal about how their pixels are dirty. I noticed, Foss, that your, uh, your pumpkin's a bit dirty. It, is it? Yeah, she's a part of the dirt the dirt gang. The boots are. I'm also that. part of the dirt gang. We might have to wash it a little bit. You're not part of the dirt gang. Get out of here. It says, it says this guy. This attention to the interiors has its own reward later when False is the one to find the one easter egg hiding borderline in plain sight that even Tango expected the gang to discover much earlier. I wish I didn't find him, because I don't think I'm going to get out of this one. Hypnotized in the meantime has the opposite experience, hitting the deadly difficulty its prime time Hypno brought his exploring to the deepest available level. The Black Mines keep him out of the dark just long enough to discover the golden egg, but not the two halves of a golden goose one would expect and Hypno is wise enough to leg it before anything discovers him. What is this? Jump scare! Ah! I knew there was going to be a jump scare in this. As is, his relationship with Tango in his murder basement is delightfully adversarial, even putting a timer on screen to sass the Clank system about how eager it is to ruin his day. And you can see why when one of the most secret places Hypno successfully discovers turns out not even implemented yet. Would you, would you waterlog this stair already? Gosh. To better learn how an actual Ravager acts, Grian puts together a training room in the back of the decked out waiting daycare. A live Ravager and a live Drowned are employed in a safe for them but not anyone else environment. Grian also recreates the River of Souls from the first level of the dungeon so the Quartz Hall is not entirely a Matrix loading room blank, knowing Kung Fu won't help you against a Warden after all. Still, even then, this is a distinctly liminal space-looking environment, and it would be a fine time for creepypastas. It's October, after all. I just went for this, like, portal-esque style. It ended up just straight up looking like the back rooms. I accidentally, and I mean this, very much accidentally built the back rooms in Minecraft. In his own way, Cubfan has been recreating Decked Out at Home by dragging more and more of it off to the museum. People have been quite generous with donating the artifact copies you get at the end of the game, and Etho has also been quite generous with exploding the Victory Tome Dispenser that one time. Yeah, we took one of those from there. Uh, we got a level 2 artifact compass that uh, Tango got. Uh, I think we already showed this. Uh, don't ask, of course. This is quite fortunate for the saturation station since the soup exploit truly is history by now.
If Grian's accidental back rooms weren't enough, Pearlescent Moon manages to noclip into the backstage area of Decked Out itself while searching for secrets. We're pretty sure she didn't want anything this secret. <laughs> Can you really blame me? I will, uh, I will, here you go, here you go. <laughs> Find your way out. <laughs> Find my, oh, thank you. Okay, let me, let me run, shall I? <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm just too IP, apparently, you know, it's fine. It's actually, tragically, kind of characteristic of how Phase 3 goes for Pearl. She's the first to admit that she has a bit of a rough time in the dungeon, whether it's grabbing an artifact and losing it to Vexes on the way out, or getting sonic boomed by the Wardens on her first visit to the Black Mines. But it's arguably all worth it for her dedication to jump boosting into unusual places, and on a single run, she locates the easter eggs of both Vintage Beef and Doc M, bringing the group ever closer to unlocking the Burning Dark. At least she sacrificed herself for the greater good. Games. Oh my god, stop with the shriekers! I just can't, I can't sneak when I don't want the Ravagers to see me. The non-egg version of Doc M continues to hatch his plans over at the perimeter, where the storyline of why the heck this hole in the ground has buildings continues to expand. The ancient tomato growers of this area seem to have crossbred their crops with wildlife and created his now trademark tomato slimes, and their irrigation system is fed by a giant domed cistern Doc builds on the one corner of the pit, with pipes feeding to several wall-mounted gardens. But the egg-shaped past comes back to haunt him, as he's summoned to help Cubfan and Hypno disable a handful of chicken breeders Azuma has built near his skulk factory, inadvertently chicken bombing the server in the process. And Doc even finds one of the decked out easter eggs himself, discovering a pressure plate deeper in the dungeon that leads through to eggs be crafted. The real XB hasn't had the time to run the dungeon all week long, but has been a real team player for anyone who's dropped by Decked Out while he's been there. He encourages Mumbo on his early runs, gives Hypno some fashion advice while they're waiting for the dungeon to reset, and decorates his own alcove to look like the train carriage from his underground base. XB is also one of several players to expand his deck by trading rather than risking it all in the dungeon. He swaps several of his frost shards for spare cards with Gemini Tay and Joe Hills. But when he's able to drop in and play himself, he's at least able to make it out with his own trademark hood. That's fine. Everything's fine. Oh, I see you. Oh, I see you. You ain't sneaky, Brett. What you doing? This is quite timely for Jem, who just decided to stop wasting her frost shards, only to die to the drip leaf parkour section. To help with it, she takes the Grian way out and rebuilds her own version of drip leaf parkour pits at her base to really hone in those jumping skills. And though her week is mostly preoccupied with getting good use out of the shards she hasn't spent, Jem stays out of the dungeon long enough to build a sailboat on the approach to her elven harbour. As much as it is a huge pain to build these, I mean, the body of it is fine, but god, the sails? Getting sails right? Such a pain. I think it's worth every minute. Taking a page out of her book, Corallis too puts a giant tree over his base, combining plenty of leaf types to create a lush, protective crown over the junkyard seashore he established as his base's art style. Finally, he is once again building with bushes. Nature is healing. First, I was afraid, I was pet no, first I was a little bit afraid because I was would be blocking the view. I'm liking it, and you guys seem to enjoy it as well. I Similarly, his deck nook appears to be decidedly wet, done in the same detailed waterlogged art style from his nether tunnel, ironically. Iskal85 has a lot to live up to after putting his head next to good times with scars on the decked out lineup, and he might have more chances to prove himself if he didn't turn up when the game was down for maintenance. In fact, the game seems to have it out for him, considering it won't give him back his bionic eye, or at one point his deck of cards, and he gets scammed by the mystery box. Perhaps it's karma for making fun of False Symmetry's shirt. Wait, the universal, the universal idea of what dirt is says that they're not dirty. Oh, hello, False. Talk, talk to the head there. <laughs> there we are. Oh, hello, False. <laughs> How are you doing? Did you know that your body has a dirty pixel on it? But Iskal has some interesting strategies up his sleeve, especially now he can't have soup up there anymore, and he actually removes the sneak and stability cards from his deck in the hopes that treasure and a key for the second level will pop up faster. It's a bold strategy, now let's see if it pays out for him. I die. Mm -hmm. That's okay. I died That's to Vex on level 1, I don't want to talk about it. Oh. Well, I, apologies, I've died to Vex on level 1 twice. <laughs> I don't talk about it either. We predicted that someone would break decked out by throwing a potato into it somewhere, but Impulse SV finds a sweeter way to game the system. At least Tango is watching and ready to pass judgement. I accidentally threw my, my sweet berries in the hole and then it gave me a thing. <laughs> uh, 
Somehow, I got two artifactors. After warming up on level 2, Impulse decides he's had enough of dying to the dungeon and decides to help Zenaf with his quest to die by every mob in the game. In my opinion, the goat is the funniest one just for the setup, even if by Impulse's perspective it happens off camera. But in case you were worried, Impulse hasn't been shirking his duties over at Scarland. He begins to add street performers animated using some armor stand magic, creating a drummer on one corner who even features a recording of Impulse's own drumming talents. For anyone who's been asking in the comments of previous recaps, the button is still alive. Mumbo confirms this as he swings by the shopping district. And the button's not the only one. Despite a close encounter with a Ravager, the single decked out run we see Mumbo do on camera is a roaring success. And everything went well. So what did I learn from this? Well firstly, you may have noticed that I should eat the berries. But he's determined to crack on with his base, which currently has a facade so it looks good from Grian's porch, but needs three additional sides to really live up to the architect's vision. Mumbo is mostly worried it'll be one block off from being symmetrical, but after double checking his measurements he pulls it off admirably, which is actually kind of a flex given the size and the choice of materials. Could not be happier that I decided to blow up that old base and start working on something different. It, that was such a good decision. But believe it or not, Decked Out is not the only game in a game capable of holding the Hermit's attention, just as the Ravager is not the only thing that could end them. And so we present to you the second round of Zombie Cleo's Blood on the Clock Tower, aka Murder Stardew Valley. Hi. B-O-O is playing a big brain game and has bamboozled the whole lot of us in the first round. Here's my defense. Number one, the classic, I'm innocent. <laughs> Every player is assigned a role, and via Amogus voting people out, they have to undo all the bad ones. And far be it from us to spoil the fun and reveal all the roles, but we can't not mention poor Azuma Void, who's already established himself as one of the more confused participants, now getting the role that makes him pretend he is a different role. Once again, see Zombie Cleo's perspective for a god mode point of view, and throw your monitor out of the window for the absolute worst one. And that's about it for this week's recap. Our writer is Loy XP, and my name is Pixel Riffs. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. Don't forget to leave a like while you're still here, and subscribe so you won't miss future recaps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.